Welcome back, guys. RedRaiderSports.com. Ben Golan here with the hardest working man in, in, in tech sports, Chris Level. Just uh, got back from vacation, driving all the way from Colorado. And the first thing he does when he gets home is starts recording. So, I mean, that's just <laughs> it's a credit to you guys and, and what y'all mean to us. But, Chris, how are you? I'm I'm not the hardest working man, uh, you know. You 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 would uh, you would push for that as well. But no, um, yeah, I went to go see my parents uh, up in Colorado. Uh, they have a uh, we we met up there and spent some time with them. So it was good to see my parents are not getting any younger. So it's good to spend a few days with them. So, but yeah, six hundred plus miles and uh, and uh, yeah, about ten hours in the car. Uh, and I'm I just unpacked my bag and I sat down with you. Uh, and, and I will tell you the one tech thing that has nothing to do with tech basketball, but the one that I, I was at uh, Crested Butte, uh, which is where Tommy McVay, you, you got to be an older tech football guy or, or somebody that's been around a long time to really appreciate uh, who Tommy was. He's, he's, he's left us for, for a few years now and, and I miss him all the time, but this was Tommy's spot. Uh, he would spend about a month in Crested Butte, Colorado every summer. And did it for, I don't know, he went up there for 15, 20 years, man, every summer. This was like his his home away from home. So certainly thought about him uh, on the way up there while I was there and then on the way home. Um, miss him a lot. Uh, but, yeah, a lot happening while I was gone, man. Uh, Joey uh, doing his thing. And then, uh, obviously, Grant McCaslin uh, finished up his roster. And, you know, Ben, we, we were sitting here about – two three weeks ago and you've got a couple of spots left you feel fairly vulnerable you you don't you don't not like what's on paper but you know I think I even said to a variety of people that would ask me about these kinds of things you really need to hit with these final two spots like they need to be these don't need to be freshmen these don't need to be like a, a chance, uh, like maybe we could, you know, and and I think you went out and you got yourself two seniors that are bona fide power five guys that are that are pieces and rotation pieces, potential starter pieces or starter pieces. And I think you feel pretty good about your situation now, uh, thanks to the addition of uh, of Devin Cambridge and then uh, Joe Toussaint. And I've seen Joe play three times uh, in person uh, in Morgantown uh, in Lubbock, which was – that was uh, hard for the old Red Raiders that day. And then obviously saw him uh, in Kansas City is that was the last game that the Red Raiders uh, would play uh, this past year. Um, and so uh, I think I, – I knew that – I, this is what I knew about Joe Toussaint. I knew that if he got into the portal, this was a guy that Texas Tech was going to be interested in. I knew that this was also not a savior. This is not an all-conference player. Don't misunderstand what you've added here. You've added a really solid, tough Big 12 player that was better on the road than he was at home. I think case in point, he dropped 22 on you off the bench in Lubbock, Texas, and he was as big a reason as any why, you know, you 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 dropped that one uh, to to West Virginia uh, Season this high, past 22. year. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think he was 12 of 14 from the strike. Mm -hmm. He's got a Bronx mentality. He's tough. I think that at times for West Virginia last year, maybe he tried to, to shoot uh, too much. Uh, I think um, that that was part of, you know, West Virginia trying to figure out their offensive identity and trying to get get going. I think at times, you know, he the shots would go in and sometimes, I mean, he just – that's not who who he was. But I, I just think it's fascinating with a guy like this because this is – make no mistake, I get excited about when you add freshmen too. I Don't misunderstand here, but I, I love the bird in the hand guy. When, when you've got – a bona fide power five guy that's done it in this league in particular, averaging basically nearly double digits a game. That goes a long way with me. He sees what Manhattan, Kansas is like on a Tuesday night and what Lawrence, Kansas is like on a Saturday afternoon or what Lubbock, Texas is on a Wednesday night. I mean, he, he's been through this stuff. And again, he's, he's not perfect, uh, but he is a, I just know from the, the folks at West Virginia that I talked to while this was going on, 
you know, they, they told me if we if we lose him, it's going to hurt us. And if you add him, it's going to really help you. And so that right there, it's it's obviously a net positive when you when you're comparing the Red Raiders to West Virginia. But they said he's very mature, no drama. And I'm thinking, okay, check, check. You, you obviously know he's got four years of Power Five experience, or I, I guess three years, uh, some time in Iowa and then in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And and he's a plus defender, you know. And so I just there was no the the only concern that I have here's the only one is that you now again have two small guards. Okay. This was a no, no brainer addition here. Make no mistake, but you now again have two smaller guards. And if you put Joe and pop on the floor at the same time, you could potentially get exploited defensively like you did last year, whenever you had pop and Davion Harmon on the floor at the same time, that is the only negative I can come up with, but in your situation with where your roster was at the time, who was available to go get this is a no-brainer ad. We're gonna have to remember that. Uh that you you had a bona fide Big 12 guard that you wanted to add and and you were able to get him. And if if you don't get him, you're either playing against him in his likely blue and gold uh West Virginia. And I even though I knew that he kind of had said I'm not going back there, or it was the purple and you know, whatever the lavender, whatever they do up in uh, uh, up in, up in the little apple there. So anyway, I, I'm filibustering here. I apologize, Ben, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to to mention those thoughts on on Joe Toussaint. Yeah, no, very good thoughts. There was a lot to to get into. I guess uh, you know, my, my my first, you brought up the concern of him and Pop both being smaller guards, and that's true. But as we reported, I think this is something that Pop kind of sought out. Uh, to play with a guy like Joe Toussaint. I think they're kind of similar, you know, body types. Toussaint's definitely more experienced and can, and they're both tough. Uh, and and that was much needed. I mean, you look at Grant McCaslin, you know, one of the things he always says is the toughest team wins. And that's what Joe Toussaint is. You mentioned the Bronx mentality, uh, the experience that he brings in and, and just beating out Kansas State, because it feels like Kansas State, has beaten you for, you know, so many other guys this off season. It was nice to kind of get back at them for this one. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's a great addition. You needed it. You had an open spot um, after Deshaun Jackson had left. And so I don't think you could have done much better than not only Joe Toussaint, but also you mentioned Devin Cambridge, another fifth year guy who's coming over from Arizona state, both of them just known as really good defenders. And so they fit what you're looking to do. You know, and, and and I'm not I'm not ever gonna not get excited about when you add some some big time freshman or anything. But until until somebody shows me that this league is different, or that everybody else is not going this route, I'm always gonna get more excited about the Devin Cambridges and the Joe Toussaints. And I'm and I and I will say this: it doesn't mean that they're they're guaranteed to be successful here. You're you're guaranteed nothing. Um, I think there's plenty of examples. I think where you've you've really done well in, in in additions like this. I think that there's also some like okay, well this wasn't quite what I thought I was adding. However, this is how you 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 have to be old and experienced to win in this league. Um, a bunch of young kids just just is is not going to get it done. And and until you, you kind of start to see that happen. I'm not going to believe that, that there's going to be a payoff with a young core that is guaranteed to stay with you for three or four years. I just, I don't, I don't buy it. Uh, there's complete roster turnover year to year. So the biggest two additions that you've, that you've added lately, and then you add this with Warren Washington, I think these are potentially, you know, along with like a pop, I guess th- these are your best players on paper. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they will, they will set Grant McCaslin's culture. Um, and it's not a knock on the Robert Jenningses and the Lamar Washington's and the pop Isaacs. Don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but if you're going to go very far in February and March and, and, and further, these will be the guys that, that do it. Remember that I said that. Um, and if they're not good enough, it's not the freshman's fault. Uh, but it, that's just kind of how, because go look around. This is what the Big 12 is doing. This is how the Big 12 is constructing rosters. And and there is just a lot of meat on the Big 12 bone right now, man. Uh, you compare what you've got to 
what everybody else is. And there are no off nights. Uh, you, you roll up your sleeves and, you know, be ready. And I don't know what the schedule looks like yet. You don't know who you have two games with and all those things. But um, I will say this. Um, I will say this, Ben. Uh, now that you're done constructing your roster, the one concern that I have is that, you know, you still lack, you know, some size. I think you lack, um, you know, a, a big, I think, I think you go from Warren Washington to, you know, you, you, Robert Jennings and then Yahalo, I think is I, I, how you say his name, the Finnish uh, mm-hmm. kid, the, the prep school kid. And I, I, you know, he's got, this is a brand new, you know, brand new freshman. And so that's where you're very vulnerable is you don't have a lot of uh, options in the paint. Yes. Maybe could Kyron Lindsay do some of these things. Could Devin Cambridge guard bigger than his position? Sure. Uh, all that is true. You just don't necessarily have another quality big with some experience. And I think, you know, Jennings is somebody that if he were to take a big step and a big leap forward, I think that, that that alleviates that. But I think there's some that will tell you, hey, he will do whatever you tell him. He's got a big 12 body, but the game hasn't slowed down for him just yet. Maybe it maybe it will. Maybe with increased playing time, maybe maybe uh it, it starts to uh it starts to happen for him. And again, I don't dislike Robert Jennings. I'm just saying I would have loved to have another, you know, somebody there to kind of bridge that gap between Warren Washington and and then uh, and Robert Jennings. But again, you can't have everything and you had two spots left. You wanted a wing. Uh, you went to go find kind of the best player that you had some interest in. And that's Joe Tucson who happens to be a, a six foot guard. And so there you go. But um, I think that you, you saw a lot of commentary that once they added uh, Cambridge and, and Tucson that, you know, people felt like, okay, now, now this is, now, now you've got a few more ingredients here, and, and now it could be a little bit uh, – there could be some fun here. This could be an NCAA tournament-type team. I saw some folks, uh, you know, mentioning that. Uh, and, you know, we'll see kind of what we get now. Yeah, you think back to last year when they played four true freshmen, and then looking at this year's roster, you only have the one in Drew Steffi. Or, well, I guess you have Yalaho too. But you're definitely going to be relying on those type of guys less. You have you're a lot older, um, and and you do have five sophomores. But all of those guys played last year. It's not like they're going to be coming in just totally green. And you need a couple of them to make big jumps. I mean, Pop Isaacs, he has to be you know probably your top scorer, right? Like uh, Lamar Washington's going to play a key role. Uh, Darian Williams is a transfer from Nevada. They're going to be counting on him. And you mentioned Robert Jennings and, uh, you know, as well. And Kyron Lindsay, of course, the transfer from Georgia. So these yeah. guys have all played, but, you know, you're counting on them to make big leaps this year. You know, if you want to make the NCAA tournament again. Yeah, no, no doubt. And, and I'm curious, you know, I, I think that there's a couple of duos here that I want to talk about. Uh, we, we talk about Toussaint. We talked about, uh, you know, Warren Washington. And then you talk about, uh, Devin Cambridge. There, there's a couple of other duos that I'm kind of fascinated uh, by now that we're 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 done here. One is the duo of of Kerwin Walton and Demorion Williams. Okay, what what do they look like in in the second year in the program under a new coach? What are they asked to do? Can they help? Can they blossom? Are they just kind of bit players like they were last year? Like, what do you get from those guys? Okay, and then I think the duo that maybe was brought in here to compete and or replace them, I don't, you know, maybe that's fair, maybe it's not, is Chance McMillan and Darian Williams. And how good, how good is that, is that duo? And is that, you know, because look, on paper, these are, these are pieces to, to your puzzle here, but Grand Canyon and Nevada are not the big 12. And so how, how does their game translate? I think that if anything, though, I, I've talked to enough people that have coached against uh, these two that have watched these two uh, players uh, talked to two folks on the West coast and, and and they will tell you the floor is really high for these guys. If that makes sense, like they're not going to come in and, and struggle or suck or be your, your worst players. They're going to be just fine. They may, however, not be, you know, a ton of upside or whatever that remains to be seen. 
I think uh, I know Coach McCaslin really likes the way Grant, uh, excuse me, that Chance McMillan shoots it. And I know that he really likes Darian Williams as this kind of like dirty work glue guy. That's why I I, I mentioned the name Kasib Powell whenever, you know, you talk to people about, uh, about Darian Williams because he just kind of fills up the stat sheet. And there's just – He's not going to just wow you in any one category or, or in any one part of his game. However, he'll kind of just just fill up that that box score with various things that he can do because of his length and skill set. Yeah, he was his conference player of the year or freshman of the year for a reason. You, you don't get that, you know, if you're not good at basketball. But uh, while you're in Colorado, Grant McCaslin also announced some coaching hires. We That's still right. expect some more to come, right, uh, going into August. Yeah, I mean, I, I think his his staff is largely in place, whether it's been announced or not. I think, uh, you know, I, I um, you know, and I'm not exactly sure what duties that each guy is going to be responsible for. Uh, obviously, Luke Barnwell, you know, because that, that's basically two guys from Sunset. Uh, mm-hmm. AC, uh, too. Yeah, that's Sunrise right. Sunrise Christian Academy. Yeah, yeah. Sunrise Christian Academy. Sorry, I'm I'm running on fumes here. I couldn't think of the the name, but yeah, that's two guys there. So in, in some ways, you don't have really any any source or or any any kind of relationship left there because you've kind of taken from it uh, a bit. Um, but uh, I, I, you know, there you, you have three assistants, and then you have like the, the these fourth and fifth assistant roles that are you know, on the way, I don't think it's like official now, but there's this kind of a gray area where they're allowed to be on the floor and they allowed to coach and do all the things. They're just, you know, you're only allowed three guys to get on the road and go recruit. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and I, I wonder how much, uh, importance there is in, into the, you know, going on the road and recruiting role as much as there used to be, because, and I do think it's important. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but I, I do think though, that with the portal that, you know, it's it's about those relationships and you just get a guy to come here. It's like, you don't, you know, I already watched you play, man. We, in fact, we played against you uh, or whatever the case may be. And so uh, I, I think that Dave Smart is going to have a role on this staff as well. At least that's the way it all points. Um, I think there's uh, been a, a variety of conversations and I don't know, agreements and, and different things going on, but what his role looks like, I don't know. But Luke Barnwell was listed as an assistant coach. Um, I, I'm curious as to who the associate head coach or like who the the top assistant is. And so I think that's why uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of what uh, what some of this looks like uh, whenever um, you you finalize, you know, roles and staff and all those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. You have any other basketball thoughts you want to get into, or? Well, no, and, and you're gonna you're gonna add uh, you're gonna add somebody from the Metroplex. I think yeah. that is fairly well known. Um, you know that you know that's gonna be uh, in a on off the court role, kind of a management role. I believe that that's uh, that's in the cards, and um, and then we'll kind of see. But um, now you don't feel vulnerable anymore. Now it's just about coaching them up man and getting these guys uh to play really hard and play really good defense i do have you know questions about this team uh however i don't question whether they'll play good defense i I don't that's what grant is gonna get them to do i think they may win games in the 50s i am curious who your leading scorers are uh i think you could this could be one of those teams that that has four or five guys that are hovering around double figures but again you know, when you need to ring the bell and go get a bucket, like, I wonder who that guy is, uh, if it's not pop, you know, if it's not pop and, and all that, like who, who, you know, probably not an all conference guy on your team per se. Uh, but I, I think you're really solid. I think you're, you're, you've gotten older and which was very important to me and you, you've, you've added a ton of experience. And I think, uh, uh, it, it, it was a fun week for Texas tech basketball for sure. For sure. Yeah, and football too. Five DB commits, but well, no, yeah. I, that is that. Yeah, that I was trying to keep this uh, hoops related. I, for I, sure. I screwed my own rules up by mentioning Tommy McVeigh in the beginning, but I'm not going to apologize for that. All, all good. No, I, I've had a couple people ask me about the schedule. I'm just looking at last year, uh, August 16th. Tech released their non-conference, and then the yeah. conference schedule wasn't released till September 23rd. So we could still be still be. Yeah. Alive. I will tell you that I believe that the conference has to have that to the TV partners. I believe it's by July the 15th. 
Okay. I think so. Last right. year they just waited for two and months. I'm for not. That reason. I'm not because I think part of that problem had to do with Texas and Oklahoma. They enter out. You know, kind of that. Gotcha. That was part of the delay there, I believe. Uh, but I, I, I'm not saying you're going to get it uh, here in a few weeks. But I do do know that they've got to get it to the TV partners. Um, you know, uh, you, you, you've got to present that, uh, by, by then and, and have it done and then they can sort out their, their, their stuff. But, uh, I know, you know, I think, uh, you know, obviously the, the Vanderbilt game at Dickies, uh, you're, you're, yeah. at Dickies and Fort Worth, I think, uh, part of a, a triple header, maybe even a quadruple header, if they continue to extend that, that's at least the way that that the, the company putting that together is, is got it, uh, on paper and it's all points to that. Um, and then obviously, what are you playing at Butler um, at Hinkle Fieldhouse? And uh, Bahamas and, too, right? Yeah, and then the Bahamas on Thanksgiving week. And then you saw uh, that there's a game on New Year's Day, I believe. Um, and then there, Roberts, right? Yeah, yeah which, yeah. you know, if Paul Mills was still there and if Max uh, Acemas was still there, I don't believe that game – would be scheduled. I don't know if they would have even wanted to come do that. Uh, I, I, you know, that, that would have just been an interesting uh, deal uh, that I don't know if that would have been a match, but with a new coach and, and, you know, Ace is now in Austin and all that, but yeah, you're starting to see a few things uh, leak out, but yeah, getting closer there and we'll spend some more time, I guess, talking football. Maybe next time we will do one of these or I'll, I'll hop on with Dickens or something like that. So anyway, sorry for the delay and talking about our man, Joe T from the Bronx. Um, and uh, and in that addition, I uh, hope everybody still has their appendages and all their hands and fingers are intact after the the fourth. Uh, hopefully, not too much uh, hangover for everybody out there. And you're not, you know, you you, you did the sunscreen thing and uh, and all that business. Uh, but uh, hashtag America, you know, and all that business. So uh, I guess with that, man, I, I don't know, Ben. You got anything else for me, or do you, you want me to? We want to wax poetic or anything else? Or we want to get out of here. No, man, good stuff. Go get some rest. You drove 10 hours. And so, well, I mean, we'll, we'll see Colorado, you next time. the weather in Colorado is unfair. It is ridiculously nice. However, there is a price to pay depending on where you go, if, uh, you know, how far you have to drive to get there. But it is definitely worth it if you get there. But boy, the, the to and the from, no bueno. Uh, but uh, I try to enjoy it uh, as much as I could. Yeah. So I guess when I left this morning, it was about 40 degrees. Wow. And then when I, you know, cause the sun hadn't really come up yet. And when I get home, it's, I think we're at 97 or something right now. So yeah, about a 60 degree swing, uh, uh, between old West Texas and, uh, uh, you know, and, and Crested Butte, Colorado, but, uh, Ben appreciate it, man. Thanks for willing to hop on with me and, uh, and all that, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks guys for subscribing to Red Raider sports. We'll do it again soon.